during the dance, I twirled him around in his wheelchair. Oh, it was so sad. <laughs> My name is Candice and I was married August 2017. Right now I'm about to tell you about my bridal horror story. My wedding DJ was the most awful DJ I have ever experienced in my whole life. So my husband and I are getting ready to do our grand entrance which is supposed to lead into our first dance. The grand entrance was great, everyone's smiling, we're happy, my husband's happy, I'm happy. It starts off great. Everything's wonderful, the choreography is on point until the music continued after it was supposed to stop. I had music that was edited, two songs that were pretty much the same, but different versions. One was slower, and then it was supposed to go into the faster, upbeat version of it. That didn't happen. And so my husband and I looked at each other like, what the French toast? And so we decided to just kind of hug each other and slow dance. The first song ends, the second song starts, and then we're still kind of like, okay, what are we doing here? Let's just fill it out until the song goes to the chorus, which is where it was supposed to pick up. So finally, the second song chorus hit, and then we were able to continue the second part of the dance, which happens on the pole. My husband and I are both pole dancers. That's how I met him. So then my husband goes and does his first dance on the pole, and it was great. And and then I did my dance, and then the song continued a lot longer than we expected. During our first dance, we didn't change. We were still in the clothes, my wedding dress, his tux that we had got married in, our whole ceremony outfits, we had them on. So I'm sweating. I've got thick layers, a long train that I'm trying to deal with. It was pretty bad. So the song ends, he finally does this dip with me, and we're looking at each other like, wow, that was bull. I shot the guy who was our DJ the dirtiest look and then, then I smiled and continued on to my table with my husband after the first dance was over we decided to just brush it off and that's when I knew it was all going wrong this guy came to the wedding with speakers that didn't even work not only that he decided that it was gonna be better for him to play music from YouTube because his system wasn't connecting right I I couldn't believe it so you have commercials playing as he tries to quickly skip through at my wedding, I realized this music situation is just atrocious and just awful. So I decided, you know what? How about we just say, thank you very much. You go ahead and go home. Luckily, I had brought a Bluetooth speaker that we used during our ceremony. And I plugged that up and I played Pandora and that was way better than the music he was playing. I wish that it never happened that way. But I guess, you know, as my husband put it, there has to be something bad that happens at the wedding, so it's memorable. Hi, I'm Natalia. I got married on August last year, and I'm gonna tell you my wedding horror story. So, it's my wedding day. After months of planning, I'm in beautiful Brazil with my family and friends, and I'm getting ready for the best day of my life. Everything's beautiful, everything's going perfect. My whole family is united, everything is as I planned. So since we both uh, speak different languages and our families speak different languages, we decide that we're going to do a bilingual ceremony. Problem is, my husband is not bilingual. I go into the ceremony and the ceremonialist starts, and she translates things back and forth and she throws in a couple of jokes about my husband and his American way of being. So she goes and decides to throw in this. E essa família linda que tá aqui e que não entende nada do que eu tô falando, olha a cara desse marido aqui que não sabe o que tá acontecendo. And everybody that speaks Portuguese in the ceremony starts laughing so hard. And all the Americans are looking at us like, um, okay. Waiting for the translation, of course, that never comes. My husband still asks me what did she say in the ceremony and I didn't tell him and I'm not going to. So she starts doing all the ceremony. We were both like crying because we just did our vows and the ceremonialist asks if I would take him as my husband and I say yes in English and he thinks he's gonna be super sweet and say it in my language for me, and he says, muito sim, which literally translates to very yes. It was almost ideal. 
So it was cute. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It actually became the hashtag of our wedding, muito sim. Him trying to speak my language to me and messing it up actually made it better. Hi, I'm Siggy, and I got married this past May, Memorial Day weekend, and this is my horror story. The wedding day is planned. Everything is perfect. Everything is in its spot. We got the flowers, we got the dress, we got the cake, we got it all. I'm so excited. It's gonna be outdoors on top of this stunning mountain. And about a week before our wedding, uh, my husband sat me down driving home from the gym. He waited till I parked, smart man, and said, babe, it's scheduled to rain on our wedding day. If you know anything about Los Angeles and weather, you know that it doesn't rain ever. Well, I kind of just ignored it. And then leading up, I started checking the weather forecast and it was literally like 80, sunny, 80, sunny, 80, sunny, 50s rain on our wedding day. And I was like, it's not gonna rain, it's LA, we're good. So anyway, we get to the weekend and it's now like definitely gonna pour tomorrow. So cool. We had a contingency plan. We got a tent because we had to. We moved the whole thing under a tent. And then the wedding planner called me the night before and was like, the tent is not gonna work anymore because it's supposed to really pour. And I was like, great, 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 cool, cool, cool. Okay, no tent. I guess we'll just wing it and move it indoors. So the wedding day, I wake up. I'm actually not thinking about it all. I'm totally in the zone. Little did I know, my husband actually called the wedding planner and said, get rid of the tent. I think it's not gonna rain. So we got rid of the tent without my knowing it. So we're driving to the venue. I haven't seen him yet. We're, we're literally climbing the mountain in the car and being chauffeured by my parents and a bunch of friends in the van. We get there and now it's like full pouring. I'm literally holding my dress. I have like three friends holding an umbrella. Someone's like holding my foot. Like, I don't know what's going on. If I had like 10 bucks, for every single person that told me rain is lucky on your wedding day, I would have gladly collected. We get there, now the wedding planner comes up to me. It's like 20 minutes till the ceremony. And she's like, okay, we set it up outside. Just so you know, your husband called this morning. Uh, she didn't call my husband because he wasn't my husband yet, but she, he called this morning and he moved it to the original spot. So your dreams are coming true, but now it's actually raining and it's too late to do anything about it. So we're moving it indoors. So I was like sheer panic on my face. I know everybody's seeing it because everybody starts rushing over, telling me about the good luck. I'm like, I've already heard this. I know that it's lucky, guys, but now it's raining, so I don't feel so lucky. And then we started taking pictures indoors. It's like to totally in now. They're moving chairs inside. This is like so not what I pictured. This is like nature, trees. We had the beautiful backdrop behind us. And of course, we're like standing in front of a white wall. And I turned to him and I just decided, you know what? Let's just go outside. Let's embrace the weather, just me and you. I think maybe what I said was like, let's get the F out of here. Grab the beautiful white umbrellas that we ordered on Amazon yesterday. and. Let's just do this because it's just about the moment and I totally relinquished control. I was like, I can't do anything about the weather. Let's just do this together. And we went outside and lo and behold, as soon as I released control of the, the skies, we watched the clouds part and this ray of sun just beams through and we're like, ah, we're getting married outdoors. Dad, go tell the wedding planner and it's totally not raining. And we moved everything back outside and we got married under this dramatic, beautiful sky that was just, you would never see in Los Angeles end of May. And you know what? Rain really is lucky on your wedding day, just not during the actual event, yeah. My name's Ash, I got married June 7th in Las Vegas and uh, I am here to tell you about my wedding horror stories. We decided to get married in Vegas, having an Elvis impersonator do the wedding, of course. We have been planning it for all of three weeks. I really wanted healthcare, uh, and I also loved him, so, win-win. Yeah. <laughs> we got 10, 12 of our friends to come out. Super fun, everything was great. And then my husband's foot started swelling. Like, big. Went to urgent care the day before we were leaving for Vegas. His foot was so swollen um, that he couldn't wear shoes. And they thought he had gout, which if you don't know what gout is, it's like, it's called the disease of kings. 
Most people get in like the 1800s. Uh, so it's really weird he got it. So we're in Vegas and his foot just keeps swelling and swelling and getting worse and worse. So I had to rent a wheelchair. Uh, we looked like horrible people, but we were, the, the floors in the casinos were really glossy. So, so we were just like running with him as fast as we can. Um, and then like letting him go, it was really funny. <laughs> but people thought we were like abusive, like abusing him. Yeah, so we finally get to the little neon chapel. Elvis wheeled him down the aisle, it was very sweet. The Elvis impersonator is super hungover, S like it was amazing. And uh, he asked us what songs we wanted him to sing and so we chose Can't Help Falling In Love, He's thinking, who can mess up the classics? And he got the lyrics wrong. It almost made it better though, honestly. Yeah, no, I wouldn't change a thing about it. He doesn't have gout anymore. And I'm married to my best friend.